is unit two of our APA MLA course, where we're going to today focus on how to keep your writing concise, clear, and not to make people angry by writing the wrong kind of words. Then we're gonna look at specific examples, sentence by sentence examples, which is gonna be a little bit boring, but very practical. Let's begin with continuity of presentation, that is how to make your writing clear. One important part of making your writing clear is punctuation. It's very important to get your punctuation correct. It's a little bit boring to learn, but I bet you've studied it before. The best way to do this is to read more to see how other people punctuate. To use more transition words, that really helps your flow of your writing. So you word, use words like so, therefore, next, in conclusion. These are transitional words that really help you get the flow going. Sometimes you can say things like then, next, after, while, since. These are really great words to help your writing move along. Therefore, consequently, as a result, these are cause and effect words. Some A causes B, therefore. You can also have linking words like in addition, moreover, furthermore, similarly. You can have contrasting words, but conversely, nevertheless, however, although. And you can have pronouns, of course, we're going to use pronouns, but you know what? Pronouns are very easy to confuse the reader. So when you use pronouns like he, she, that, they, those, these, when you use these pronouns, you need to be very clear what is it you're referring to. Smoothness of presentation is related to making your writing go smooth from point A to point B. And of course, when we're doing our writing, we have words, sentences, and paragraphs. And when we talk about smoothness, we're talking about word to word, sentence to sentence, and even paragraph to paragraph. So this smoothness idea really covers your whole writing, beginning at the lowest level. How can you make your writing smoother? How can you improve it so that it reads smoother? One great way is to give it to someone else to read. So if you give it to a, a, a classmate or a colleague, they can give you some input. You can do something that is very common and very helpful, and that is don't work on it for a while. If you're writing your thesis and you've written a chapter, put it away for a while. Do some other work. Maybe change what you're doing. Maybe you're working the literature review. Put that away. Work on methodology for a while. Then after a few days, come back and read it fresh. See it new. You'll be able to see that it's not smooth in some places and you can make it better. Also, you can just read the paper out loud. That is, read it and speak it at the same time. And this can really help you to hear the problems that your paper has. Another thing is you can read it and record it and then listen to your recording. And you'd be surprised. It really helps you see where your writing can be made smoother. Avoid unnecessary shifts in verb tense within the same paragraph or adjacent paragraphs. Now this is a hard one to do because in English, of course, these verbs have your tense like future, present, past, and they're very easy to get confused. But in our research writing, we're trying to stick to one tense at least in every section of your paper. So the literature review will have one tense, the methodology will have one, the conclusions will have one. We're going to talk a little bit about that, a little bit more about that in a minute. So verb tense really helps the reader to read smoothly through your paper. Now some journals actually require that you keep your whole paper in one tense. Uh, many journals, good journals these days, require everything to be written in present tense. But the APA does not specify that. In fact, the APA is recommending that, number one, don't change tense a lot. Don't have one paragraph that's past tense and the next paragraph is present tense. Rather, you can have your literature review as past tense because it's reviewing research that happened before. And then your results could be present tense, since the results now, and your discussion could be present tense, since it's happening now. Literature review and description of the procedure, these can be in past tense. So, for example, Smith showed something. 
so they can be in past, because they're past research. Present perfect tense is also okay, acceptable. Researchers have shown. So again, that's in the present perfect tense. Researchers have shown. In the results section of your paper, you would be using past tense, anxiety decreased significantly. And then in the implications and conclusions section, you would be using the present tense. The results of the experiment indicate, results of experiment to indicate right now. So this is a rule of thumb. It doesn't mean you have to do this all of the time. It doesn't mean uh, you, you cannot change it to be another way. It's possible you could change to a different way, especially if your school, your professor, or your journal you're targeting specifically tells you something different. And whenever I publish to a journal, they always have very clear rules about this, and that's what I follow, even if I feel that it doesn't make sense to me or it's a little bit different than APA. One thing you can do to help your writing be smooth is use hyphenation. Hyphenation is that little dash in your keyboard. And this can be used when you have very complex or complicated words that come in a series. So for example, here we say a control hyphen question. Notice the hyphen has no space before and no space after. So a hyphen is this a very short, very short mark here. Let me see if I can circle that. Get my pen going here. This one right here, you see? That's a hyphen. A hyphen is sh very short, just like this. A dash is longer, or a dash is two hyphens together make a dash. So a dash is not on your keyboard. D-A-S-H, a dash. A dash is not on your keyboard, but when you type two hyphens together, Microsoft Word and other programs will automatically change it into a dash. What we're talking about here is not a dash, it's the short one, it's the hyphen that is on your keyboard. So you can combine words like control and question. Basically, it's a complicated idea, but it is a thing, so you combine it together to be a single thing. Here's another example, an expanded issue expanded issue because this is a thing so this is a noun basically we're combining it together to make it clear that this is a one thing a control question right an expanded issue control question technique now what we're saying here is that expanded issue control question technique this is a some kind of methodology some kind of method if we did not use these hyphens, the user would be easily confused because they would read an expanded issue control question. So these are four words in a row and you begin to get confused. What is it we're talking about? Is this expanded control question or is this expanded question? So by using the hyphen, you clearly help the reader see how oh, these two go together and these two go together here, and that makes more sense. So hyphens are a great way to help your writing with complex ideas be a little bit smoother to read.